Hi, this is Chris with HowToAbleton.com, and I'm going to cover quickly the difference between using send and returns in arrangement view and using the send and returns inside a drum rack. Uh, right now, you're looking at a drum rack with send and returns in it. This is what you would normally see when you open up your drum rack. This, some pads, and you get your simpler, and that's about it. You don't see any options down here in the far left towards the bottom. You click chain, this is the chain view. You click this, uh, this little dot underneath the on and off. And you'll get your chains, which are your samples that you've loaded. Kick, snare, hat, hat. And you'll get to see everything about them. Now down here, now that I've clicked uh, there, I get a little option below down here. It's uh, I-O, S, and R for send and return. I'm going to click I-O. And I'm going to click send, and I'm going to click return. Now, I've already put a uh, delay and a reverb inside here, just like I did out here. Um, you get your this little box down here, drop audio effects here, which should be obvious. And, in fact, it's very obvious. Drop audio effects here. You cannot, just so you know, side note, if I create a new track here, out in arrangement view, and I double-clicked reverb, it would show up in there simple. If I was in here and I double click any any effect, it's going to put the effect after the entire drum rack. I don't want the entire drum rack reverbed in this case, so I'm going to delete that. You literally have to drag and drop the effect into uh, this drop audio effects here section of the drum rack. And keep in mind, because you are using a center return, you have to put each one of these effects at fully wet. You don't want the dry signal coming through twice because it is acting just like a send and return out here in arrangement view. So in this instant instance, I'm going to take, I'm going to delete all. Oh. Uh oh, I accidentally deleted my snare. Let's undo that. There it is. Okay, I'm going to delete the sends. There we go. Okay. Cheesy house beat. So I, I, on this cheese ball house beat, I want to make the snare sound a little better and not so dry. If I was strictly doing it, let's turn this off. If I was strictly doing it in arrangement view, I would have to go find every snare. And I have created automation lanes for, for uh, reverb and delay on my send and returns. So here's my reverb. Highlight in here, get my mouse close to the automation uh, line and it turns yellow, which means I've selected it. Let's do it again. And drag it up, and there it is. Let's listen to it. I mean, it's like, I can copy and paste that with Command D. It's just too much. It's like a punch gunshot on that snare because what is happening is I'm not just sending the snare to the reverb, I'm sending the kick drum that's underneath it. And I don't want a lot of mud in this reverb. It's been a nightmare to mix down the road because I'll have a lot of low end moving around. Uh, this is bass heavy music anyway. I want to reserve all that low end for kick drums, bass, and anything else and, and some effects that I want. I don't want it living on every snare hit. Let's do the same thing to the delay and see what happens. And I'll Duplicate that. Doesn't sound it doesn't sound horrible, but what I'm getting now is kick drums, and this simple delay is panning right and left. I'm getting kick drums in my right and left field of my my stereo, and it, it's not, uh, you know, it, the end game for a lot of our tracks is probably to be played in a club or in big systems, and you got a lot of low end going right and left, it can really cause some phasing issues and some other issues in clubs and big systems. So it's not wise to have it there. So using the send and return to get delays and reverb on my snares, this way is not only tedious, because I, I gotta go find every snare, it's also not really good for mixing, unless it's the sound you want. So I'm gonna delete all this automation I just did up here in arrangement view. 
Now let's go back down here and turn chains on and my sin and return here. Here's my snare. Here's my send A and send B, which is going to go to uh, delay and reverb, respectively. So I'm going to send some verb. So I have my send B on my snare, going to the verb, full wet. Every time it fires, I don't have to automate it. It's just there. I can now automate it if I want, but just to get some simple reverb on this, I don't need to. Let's hit play. Okay, snare sounds a little more alive, but the important part is I don't have anything else in that reverb. Uh, that reverb tail is strictly the snare. Now I'm gonna add a little delay on the snare to get a little, little bit of a groove. I'll solo it so you can hear it. It's just, it's just a lot cleaner a lot cleaner sounding, a lot easier to mix down the road. Uh, if you're just trying to get little touches of reverb and delay or whatever other effect you want to use on certain elements in your drum rack without having to go outside of your drum rack to do it. Um, again, all this is fully automatable. You can almost treat this uh, send and return feature just like you would down here uh, over here in your arrangement view. So that's it for this one. We'll do some more in-depth tutorials on breaking down uh, other things you can do with send and returns inside a drum rack automation using maybe even the uh, Max for Live uh, MIDI LFO and audio LFO plugins to automate some of these things uh, either in intervals or just have it free running just so you get some more human effects more human uh, kind of human interaction with the drum rack um, put this to good use give it a shot see if you can maybe clean up your mixes without having to go uh, tediously grab every element you want to send reverb to and delay to in arrangement view and start using send and returns inside your drum rack. Thanks.